All right, for today's class, you're going to be doing an experiment regarding SAT prep, or at least you're going to be designing it. So I'm going to walk you through it a little bit because it can be a little tricky the first time you're doing one of these on your own. Chances are some questions might come up. So what I want to do is I just want to give you an opportunity to see my thought process and maybe it can help you along when you're doing this yourself. All right, so they're talking about a school that's offering an SAT prep class. They're offering two different formats, online and a classroom teacher. And you want to know which teaching method yields higher scores. They have 50 total students, 20 of whom are seniors and 30 are juniors. Okay, now the first question they ask us is a completely randomized design. How would we design that? Now completely randomized designs those are pretty straightforward. What happens with those is you start out with all of your subjects. In this case, all of our subjects are the 50 students, right? And we're not breaking them up by any characteristics at all. What we're doing is we're taking that 50 and we are just randomly assigning a treatment. You know, randomly assigned treatment. Remember, you always randomly assign treatments within an experiment. So in this case, we'll say 25, get the online, and then 25, get the classroom. That would be just randomly doing it. it doesn't matter who goes into what group. You just randomly take all 50 of them. Like maybe use a random number generator, assign, you know, 50, assign them numbers, you know, all 50 students, 1 through 50. And then randomly select 25 numbers. Those corresponding students get the online treatment. The other 25 get the classroom treatment. And then what happens is they, you get, give them the instruction, give them the test, and then compare. Compare your scores. That's it. It's pretty straightforward. You know, there's no real blocking. There's no, you know, accounting for confounding variables. When you do a comp uh, random, completely randomized design like this, what you're hoping is that when you're randomly assigning the treatments to half and half here, you're hoping that within this group of 25 online, right, you're gonna get a good mix of seniors and juniors in there. You know, all sorts of different GPAs, all different genders. You're hoping that because you randomly did it, you get a good mix. Same thing with the 25 classroom. When you do a completely randomized design, you're hoping that you get a really good mix by doing that. That's what we like by doing things randomly. Now, number two mentions that they hypothesize that the results could be greatly affected by grade level. So they're thinking that grade level could be a confounding variable. So they know that students generally score better on the SAT as juniors. So they said, what could they do to the experiment to ensure this? Now you can draw an outline of it. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna block it out like you guys have learned. I'm gonna start out with my 50 students. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to break them up into two categories, juniors, and they tell us how many juniors do we have here? 30, okay. So I'm gonna break it up into the 30 juniors. I'm gonna break it up into the 20 seniors. So what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of that variable. I'm, I'm, in that case, I can just compare juniors to juniors and seniors to seniors. Because at this point, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do RA, that means random assignment. And how am I gonna do that? Let's see, I'll number all the juniors one through 30. I'll randomly select 15 of them. And 15 will get the, let's see, N equals 15. And they will get online. The others will get classroom. and then I will compare their scores. So I'm only comparing the juniors to each other. That gets rid of any variable of people saying, well, of course, the, you know, like if I just did it up here, and I said, well, the ones who did online did better, people might say, yeah, but your online group had a lot of juniors. They're expected to do better on the test. Now by isolating the juniors, I can't use that as an excuse anymore. And then for seniors, I can do the same thing, randomly assign 10, online, randomly assign 10 in class. Now I'm writing this really quickly, so bear in mind that this isn't the neatest block design. When you have the time, you wanna make sure it looks a little bit nicer than mine. And then you compare the results of the seniors. 
So then you could look at the juniors and the seniors separately. Look within the junior group and say, okay, maybe within the juniors I'm noticing the online students did better, but with the seniors, the ones who were in class did better. Hmm. So then I could compare these results too, and maybe the conclusion I come up with is, well, based on my experiment here, it seems like juniors do better in the online environment and seniors did better in the classroom environment. Now it says seen, uh, counselors are worried about a student's GPA and how that's going to affect their score. So they want us to look at only juniors, and they want to be sure that the GPAs are being evenly distributed in the groups. And how can we do that? Okay. I said we're just focusing on the juniors now. So I can start out with my n equals 30, right, my juniors. How many, did they say how many groups? They want to be sure different, or just, okay. Evenly distributed in the three, in the two treatment groups. Okay, so it doesn't even necessarily tell me how many groups of GPA I want. Okay, so what I can do is break up the juniors according to GPA. Maybe I can do greater than three. Down here I can do two to three. And then here I can do less than two for a GPA. So I've broken them up based on GPA. And then within each group, again, randomly assigned within each group, online class. I'm gonna do that within each group, so I'm only comparing kids who have similar GPAs now. Gotta love uh, copying and pasting. Don't, didn't wanna do that. There we go. And then, compare. So then I might look at the kids who have above a 3.0 and say, hey, they did a lot better online. Whereas when I looked at the kids who got between a 2 and a 3 GPA, maybe they did better in class. And the ones who had less than a 2 GPA, maybe I noticed that it didn't really make much of a difference. And then I would just compare all three of the results. And I could come up with some sort of conclusion saying, well, based on what I saw here, maybe if a student has a, above a 3 GPA, then maybe we could put them in the online class. And then for the ones who have, you know, below a 3 GPA, I'll put them in the in-person class. That's basically what you're looking at here. You want to be able to look in the experiment and be able to, one, completely randomize design it, do a completely random design like we did in one. And you want to be able to account for confounding variables. Like we did in two here, we accounted for grade level being a confounding variable. And in three, we accounted for GPA being a confounding variable. These are things you want to be able to account for within an experiment to design one that will give you results that can be very concrete or easy to decipher without having to worry about too many other factors coming in.